Yeah. Okay, recording now because yeah, you're showing me your van, which is amazing. No, I had never yeah. seen it, and that the roof just blew me away to start with. Wow, that's extraordinary. Isn't that's it cool? I'll give you the I'll give you the tour. So this is the cockpit, which is like the drivers and the co-pilot uh, space, and then this is where we have all our circus stuff. Mm hmm. And then here's the. Um, uh, the meowster. So this is our meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the Dorothy. Oh, wow. The different generations of, of tree masters. Mm. And then this is, this is the, the hallway. Hey. And then this is, hey. this is the rainbow meow. Mm -hmm. the, the mushroom house with the worker bees. <laughs> <laughs> I made this sticker, uh, so meow with me. <laughs> nice. This is, this is my pet bunnies right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, how are you? Great to see this you. Is, this is Benja. He's saying hi to you. Hey, hey. Love, love, hey, love. Benja, how's it going? <laughs> oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. We just had some paintings that uh, a friend made, and these are her Hare prints. Krishna. Yeah. It was so beautiful. It, Wow, she made she painted that. That's the print of her painting. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, they're they're incredible. All the paintings. That's pretty she awesome. Made. You know, it's great. You're just reminding me that I I think it was the last time the last time I was out in public the the um the Valentine's event that we did at I Love Yoga where, where yeah. Benja was there too. So we were. Oh, all, you met Benja? Yeah. We were all together at that event exactly. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's when you guys met. When we met and like the last time I was out in the world. So it's very synchronous that we're connecting again here um, and that you're you're being the connection. So that's awesome. As a yeah. matter of, as a matter of fact, I was just I was showing um, Kat. I'll show you too. Uh -huh. Pictures from Higher Vibe Life and like you were in like all of them. So it was awesome. Oh. It was awesome to see like how, um, let me go back to it, all the different um, events and that you were like, hey, there's Angie, there's Angie. So first this one at Inhale Miami. I remember I wasn't in that one. No, you are, you're right here. Really? Oh my God, oh my God, yeah. And Rico's right there. Exactly. Yeah. And Rico's there. And Kevin Walton is there. And Jack Miller is oh, there. How cool is that? So, and I've been in touch with Vinny lately. He's been helping to support. And I've been in touch with some other oh. people in here. Yeah. So there is that event. And then this event at, uh, at Plant Theory. So uh -huh. I'm looking. Maybe you weren't in this one. No, doesn't maybe look like maybe not this one. But then the next one, well, there's this one. I'm not sure if you're in this one. I'm not sure where you see your face in this one. That. I didn't hear Miami, but then there's this one at uh, Plant Theory. Here you are again. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> so yeah, you're just <laughs> where am I in this one? I see Rico. I see Rico. Oh wait. Oh, in this one. You're here. Yeah. On the right. Where? You see yourself on the right over here. Right here in on the yellow. On the right in the yellow. Oh, yeah. maybe I'm not seeing it. Are you not seeing the, no. the image that I'm showing you? Oh, that's interesting. No, not... maybe it's maybe it's cut out or something. I don't know. That's interesting. Here, let me change the screen size yeah. and Are you seeing it now? Let's see. I see Paola. I see. So you don't see. To, you don't see to the right of Paola. That's no, like, I'm not seeing to the right of Paola. Oh, I'm I'm next to Paola. That's interesting. Yeah, and next to my mom actually. Let me. Oh, cool. See if I can do a screenshot so I can show it to you. Let me go down here. This yeah, so this was an event at Plant at Plant Theory, and yeah. um, and then the, the last event that I did, well, the last big event before the Valentine's event was the um, the um, 
Gathering of the Tribes in Miami Beach. Remember that one? I remember that one. Yeah. They're very, they're very present in the images for that one as well. Yeah, I remember that one. Oh, now I see it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow, it's just like going back in time. <laughs> I know, isn't it? It's wild. And um, yeah. And then, you know, so this was the Gathering of the Tribes event. Oh, yeah. And this is where, here, I'll show you the album where you can see, you know, some of the specific pictures. Oh. El Gato. Oh, yeah. There you are. And Harold. Oh, Harold, yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> I remember that. Oh. I missed that hat. Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so nice and warm. <laughs> yeah, it was a great time. This is a good yeah. time, too. Yeah. Can you see, can you see so yourself cute. in this one? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh how the cute. Is <laughs> Yay. Here Yay, we are. exactly. <laughs> our, our recent history. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Um, amazing. Well, I'm glad we're we're back on <laughs> exactly yes so now i you sent me the link and it's asking me for an email address do i need to put in your email address or no, my put, in, address? put in yours put in mine and it'll just give yeah. me what i'm looking for okay I'm yeah yeah put in yours and that's basically my partner kelly from new earth now uh, she's basically going to receive your email yeah i um, might have already done this because i did actually um get some reach out to Kelly for, I don't know if it's for this, but she sent me something, you know, um, automated. Oh, that, maybe, or, maybe that was for her website. Like if you went through her website. Yes, exactly. I went through her website and asked for more information and that's what I got sent. Okay, so this is different. Yeah. Got yeah, it. this is the pitch deck for the land that we want to develop in Manuel Antonio in um, Costa Rica. Yep. Um, basically, we actually went to go see this land uh, together, which is 1,400 acres. And nice. we want to create this, uh, this place yeah. where it's going to be subdivided with different lo uh, lots for different um, types of uh, of homes from tiny homes to like larger homes. And then we have all the different um, public spaces and all of the different systems that we have um, integrated into this whole thing. It sounds amazing. I'm, I'm uh, excited that yeah. I'm excited that you're taking this on because as the project you want to focus on, because again, I looked through each of yours and I'm still very interested in connecting on the technology side with what, what you're doing as well. But, but this one, um, you know, I watched Kelly's video and then I, mm -hmm. you know, asked to get more to see what was, she was sending and that sort of thing. So I really appreciate the energy that she's holding and what she's doing and to know that you guys are creating together and you're being a big part of that is really great. So. I'm very interested in seeing what we can do to align, you know, all the forces to support that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is basically like a, a long-term project. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's definitely, I, wa I would like, to, I was, what I was going to do for my manifestation was uh, like a headquarters here in Florida. And I still want to do that because I feel like Florida needs a space um for for this but i also want to focus this is like a long-term uh living situation that i want to manifest for for a lot of us right for myself for all of our team that we this is where we want to live yeah. um as you know costa rica is like the new earth headquarters of the world 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I am seeing this as like a long-term vision, even though I do want to have a, a smaller um, Florida headquarters. Um, so I don't know, maybe we can talk about how, how that yeah, it's great that you're starting with that because that's kind of, you know, where we want to start with is to ponder a bunch of different types of visions that you have and scales and time frame because, um, you know, soon you will start having a number of these visions in the system, mapped out in the system, specifying the stakeholders you're looking for. You know, eventually you'll have yeah. your whole world kind of mapped out within the system, right? So that you can direct anybody to whatever part of it and they can support you. And that's kind of where we're going with this, right? Like a very much an organizational structure and system for our lives to organize all the different ways that we're working on creating results and bringing visions alive into the world. Right. So that's the longer term, like where we're going with it. So now it's a matter of which one do you want to focus on, you know, that you can create results with in the next few weeks, in particular with this group of people, you know, in the leadership council and that you want to, you know, use this time, this moment in time to focus on. So if, you know, if you're certain that it's in this area or you want to explore different areas, it's really up to you. But that's the opportunity yeah. right now is like, what's going to be the featured vision that you're going to be describing to the leadership council that you're going to be focusing on doing some video editing to get the videos right and, you know, whatever it looks like. So do you have a clear right. vision of that or do you want to keep talking it out a little bit more? Yeah, maybe we can talk about it a little bit more and then it could get more clear because like I said, uh, like Abundancia, that is basically the, the space that I want to live in for the long term and that I want to work in and that I want to manifest, right? Uh, and also, like, Florida is also, like, where I'm at right now, right? And where I am um, establishing myself for the, for the time being because this is, this is a home for me as well, right? And I know that there's a big need for that. So I would like to see how, I would like to create um, like, um, even if it's a partnership or something with somebody who already has property in Florida um, that wants to include more of like this type of vibe where there's education and there's healing and there's like ecology. And then there is like, um, classes here and that it could be like a springboard for people that want to go into Costa Rica right so I was even thinking about um and I did have a, a, a just a small drop in that I have pending to do a bigger drop in with um Khalil from uh the land down in Homestead so like they already have the perfect place here in Florida for for doing like a mini version of that but here Right. So maybe even like dropping in with him more and seeing, okay, you know, let's, how can we partner up? Right. And how can we create a headquarters here and then help that be more like a springboard um, and and bring in other investors that want to, that want to invest in in Costa Rica and something bigger. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I I totally see that. And, you know, Cahil and I went, pretty deep together in the past. We've spent some time connected with each other. So there's, there's, it's time for us to reconnect. And I'm sure that Kahil will be on the leadership council. I'm sure he'll want to be on the leadership council and I'm sure it'll be great to have him and, you know, other people in this realm and, and to, to, to vision these ideas that you're having into the world with all of these people together with the support yeah. of the whole, you know, there's a greater South Florida community. As you're saying all that, my the wheels are turning in my head about like the whole permaculture community in South Florida and all of the, the land and the opportunity to connect. And there's just so much opportunities. And, and this is kind of where, you know, I went with, um, Emiliano yesterday when we had our session is that there's so many ways for you just to do what you do to spin magic in the community as you're connecting here and connecting there. But as you're doing it for you to be connecting people into this 
network that now they are connecting with each other like you develop this network around you but the value for everyone is to be connected into this network just like yeah. Kyle has done and just like you know other people have done but you're now doing it at this moment in time right like what is the vibration that you're pulling into you for all of your needs right at this moment it's like your leadership council that you're building around uh abundancia and, and all of that right and the south florida yeah. component and all of that that's kind of the way that i see it at the moment is you're like taking this by location to location south florida costa rica creating this interconnection and interplay between the two and building up the whole infrastructure and support system so much in south florida and that's the thing you have the benefit of me and all of these other people on the leadership council having roots in south florida already that you're tapping into this existing structure that's even going to grow even more we're going to pull in yeah. a bunch of other south florida powerful people that just aren't on the council yet but will be soon so this whole network that's your audience to you know know what you're doing and you, you know it i can see it manifesting quite easily you know everything that you're describing you're definitely holding the energy to make it happen at this point yeah Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate your work around all of this um, manifestation process and bringing us all together to do that. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So I know we're going to keep kind of weaving and flowing, but let's start yeah. with like that, like the big picture vision, right? What I just described, is there any, th yeah. any ways that you want to adjust what I just described as your, vision right now um well what i'm what i'm seeing is definitely creating a a bridge for sure uh it's like a, a it's a bridge to unite the worlds right to unite the worlds of uh south florida conscious community uh that are already here we're already rooted we want to create these uh, beautiful spaces for for living life, right? For living life in harmony and in abundance, and uh, with all of the resources that we need, so that we can move forward into the future uh, from a place uh, of of living our best life. Um, so basically, creating that bridge of the community that's already established here, that perhaps already has resources in the form of property or in the form of investments or whatever that may be uh to get like a mini abundancia here uh that can then serve as a springboard as for space for people who want to take the next big step and say okay we're we want to go to um, Costa Rica and also create, you know, a land there that's bigger, you know, because there's just so much more space there. Um, and also with the law, I mean, right now we have it really good in Florida. We're doing really good, thankfully, you know, out of all the states um, in the country. And we just have to be prepared. That's one of our, the permaculture principles. We have to be prepared for contingency. Um, right now, thankfully, in Florida, we have a lot of freedom. Um, where we're not like being required to have vaccines to go into, you know, a restaurant or whatever. Um, and hopefully that will continue as, as long as possible. And, and we also need to have a, a different plan because we, we just don't know what's going to happen, right? We don't know what's going to happen in all the different fronts from climatic, from the climatic front to governmental or whatever it is. So we just, we need to be prepared. Um, and we need to have land and we need to have resources and we need to have water and we need to have food and we need to have all of these different things that are necessary for, for living life on this planet, right? So I feel like Florida is great to have a space that we can springboard into a bigger space in Costa Rica and have a bridge because we might want to be coming and going for some time, right? For as long as, as that is possible. Um, and uniting the, the tribe. And this is a tropical environment. Um, Costa Rica is a tropical environment. So there's a lot of really good uh, interchange that happens. Yeah, that's really great. 
for the way that you shared all of that. I really appreciate um, the way you encapsulated it all. That's a good, we've got a good shot of your vision there. So that's awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanna to add to the vision you just shared? Um, I guess for the vision is, uh, so yeah, so creating a, a new earth, uh, basically a headquarters here in uh, South Florida that could serve as a space uh, for community uh, procreation and a living space and a working space that facilitates education, education for eco conscious uh, and also health and wellness and also conscious entrepreneurship, right? Like everything that you're teaching about, like all of these different skills that we need to live and to thrive uh, where we can have a center for that. And basically what I'm seeing also is a, it's a conscious co-working space where we can come in, we can shoot our videos, you know, we can shoot our courses, we can shoot all of the different media that we need to shoot to create uh, awakening and also informative and educational material that can help people to live a better life and, and to empower them, right, into freedom. Um, and, and that also helps to empower ourselves and each other, right? So creating, that, and that's basically a blueprint of having an abundancia is having a studio, right? A film studio, production studio, having a holistic sense of, okay, we can make content, we can have media, we can produce music, we can basically have all of our entrepreneurial needs met so that we can be producers and then having all of our living needs met met too right that we can be harvesting clean water and growing uh clean food and where we can be having this environment where we don't have to be you know afraid of whatever can happen whether it's a pandemic or whether it's a financial whatever could happen in the world we just we have to be ready for anything right and so just having this a spaces for for that yeah, I hear what you're saying, and I love what you said about the blueprint. Um, and I think that's really important is that if you guys are creating a blueprint and you're modeling and you're showing people how to do it and providing the support system and the support structure to be able to do it in other locations, that's amazing. That's really the, uh, if you, uh, have you guys been talking about that? Yeah, yeah. And actually, you know, I'm also partnering with, with Ascended. I'm actually having a capture call today. Uh, later on today. So basically we're creating an Ascended Space Network. Um, and then with the Ascended Space Network is basically about creating a, uh, basically a sisterhood or a brotherhood, sisterhood, brotherhood of spaces like this throughout the, the world, of course, starting out with our homes, my home is in Florida. So Definitely, I wanna I wanna see Florida flourish into this paradise that it that it could be more so than it already is, right? Yeah. Um, so I want to put this in the map. Like we are also working in a space in California, and I feel like California has has a lot of this consciousness behind it, and I feel like Florida um, really needs that that energy behind it as well, especially because a lot of people are moving here from California and New York and other places, right? So I, I feel like it's time. It's time for Florida to rise up. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> What's that? And awaken. And awaken, yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's always seemed like Florida has always had a little bit of a lag from other places that were a little further ahead, right? Um, yeah. But then, like you said, it's becoming a very popular destination place, it seems like, for people to come, you know, and start being and spending time. And so, yes, let's be the groundedness for the consciousness around and to create that network of support, like you're saying. And um, I think it's great. Again, this I think the system is going to really lend itself well for you, you know, kind of 
creating a, a map of what you're doing. And that's where we'll, we'll start to get into the specifics of the, you've already mentioned a bunch of specific like stakeholders that you're looking for, but we'll start to talk yeah. about more through the different lenses. Um, again, the lenses that we'll focus on today are strategy, organizing, management, technology, outreach, and finance. So we'll look at the vision through each of those lenses to start to identify, you know, certain needs and certain things that you're pulling in, you know, resources, stakeholders that you're looking for, whatever it is that you need to pull together to achieve the vision that you're describing, right? Yeah. So like you said, like one of the first ones is the land, right? Whether it's the land that you're talking about that Cahill has or some other. Like a part, I would see that like a partnership, right? I would see that like a, a partnership where they're obviously already activating the land with different events. And like we did a tree planting ceremony and things like that that are already happening on the land. And now it's like, okay, we're going to... Um, have more of a partnership how can we bring in you know an activation right how maybe we can have a, a permaculture course right and have more more gardens being created right um having more more plantings and maybe it's also like activating with a with a council meeting right or having a mastermind or having uh some more of the the collective uh genius coming in together to like go forces together um ha maybe it's a, a making a, a sustainable uh construction right because there's definitely a lot of land there and there's constructions that are already built there that are more you know a beautiful mansion but old world you know using old world um construction um mechanics what if we were to say okay let's let's build a a, a structure from scratch that is the perfect model of what a sustainable regenerative building would look like uh that it's specifically designed for a tropical environment right that can be resistant to hurricanes that can keep itself cool in the in in the summer without so much fossil fuels of like air conditioner uh that it could be self-sustaining right where it can be self-regulated with a uh, passive solar design right where it can have like just an abundance of uh of gardens around it and where the water can be resourced uh back into the land right so like there's the space for that, right? Uh, that now there's would just need to be like the agreement, okay? If, if that's something that they would like to do, right? To be like a role model for the community of like how we can do things better. Yeah, I think that's perfect. That's a very clear um, like vision, like subvision that you just described, right? Like creating that structure on the land. So that's that in and of itself can have a whole process applied to it. And it's great that you've identified that. And we're going to keep identifying all these different parts that you're going to decide, you know, when they come onto the front burner, when they're on the back burner, and then when they're on the front burner, right? right, and, that, right. And, and that's part of what we're doing now. I just sent a couple names as they were popping up just to see. Um, do you are you able to see in the chat who I just sent? Let's see. I'm going to look at my know, chat. Do you know either of those names? Uh, Kathy Souls and Jean Safes. Yeah, I don't know yeah. them. Okay. Yeah. I was just, um, so Jean, I brought up because he built a house like that years ago, maybe like 10 years ago now. It's been a while. And I don't know if he's still doing it. Actually, Last I spoke to him, and it was quite a while ago, he was doing like a hotel development in Costa Rica, now that I think about it. So maybe we should definitely connect. But the, the, the construction that you were talking about, and I don't know if you were quite in the same, you know, I think what you're imagining building on that land is far different than what he built as like a single family home in um, Miami, but he was working to make it as conscious and social and all of that as it could and be a model and all of that. And even had like 
will I am put like different crystals into the foundation of the home to have it activated in certain ways with crystals and that sort of thing as as an example along with all the other you know water and everything else so right. anyways I'm just thinking of him because especially if he still has any South Florida connections or Costa Rica connections he could be a good right. person to connect with based on where he was at so long ago with all of that and Kathy just popped into my mind because she has a space that I, I, it's not like the space that you're looking at, you know, like you're talking about building something or something, but she has a space, um, an outdoor like um, temple space, basically, that potentially I could see you being connected with Kathy and working with her and that sort of thing um, in, in another, you know, in another realm. So I'm, we'll, we'll mark okay. those down and connect you with those people as possible, you know, stakeholders or vision holders or what have you. And okay. That's, um, yeah, let me, I think that's, it's bringing up a good point is I should probably describe yeah. these different functions that are now, let me make a couple of notes real quick. Okay, so there's, Three, three different um, types of people or entities that you are looking to attract your, to yourself within the manifestation process. So the first one are the analysts and the analysts help you analyze your plan and see you know, that you're figuring out what all your needs are in order to accomplish the vision, right? So like, yeah we want to have a studio okay so what do we need what does the studio need to have you know technologically what sort of production capability what sort of sound system what sort of the, you know where you're mapping everything out in advance you know right. and really having a whole plan for all that's needed to manifest it right right so so that during that planning phase there's a lot of different people that you need to consult oftentimes that have expertise outside of your realm of expertise that need to help you know, you know, what do I need to do for this? How much is this gonna cost? What sort of, you know, sound system do we need in this space? You know, different things like that, right? Right. So those are your analysts essentially that are helping you do the work during the planning phase. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they're helping you determine which parts of your plan are going to go from the planning phase to the recruitment phase. So, you know, again, you could be coming up with a bunch of different ideas that you're like, oh, this is definitely part of the longer term plan, but we're not going to really focus on that this month. That's going to be more like four months from now when this other thing is done, then we're going to focus on that type of thing. Make sense? Yeah. So this planning phase really helps you narrow down on like what is going to be in the funnel of your attention for this particular vision that you're sharing with people within whatever time frame you are so that it can be very narrowed down and very specific. Make sense? Yeah. And then also allow you to decide that like, yes, this is something that I'm willing to like be dedicated to, right? You could you could come up with the whole plan. Let me take a quick drink. You could go through the whole planning thing, like let's say with the studio, for example. Like you go through the whole planning process with the studio, and then you're like, okay, I got it planned out, but it's going to take way more of my time and attention and finance and everything than I was expecting, and so I can't do that now. Like six months from now, at the soonest, I could do that. But maybe you have a friend that's like hey, I can do that now, you know, I'll just take the plan and run with it type of thing, right? So it's where the planning phase not only serves you in creating it, but serves you deciding like, are you ready to champion this? Or is somebody else ready to champion this? Or is this just gonna sit on the shelf until it has a champion to move forward to the next phase? Does that make sense? You're, you're on mute, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so, so we're going to go through this planning phase, you're going to recruit the support of different analysts along the way to help you, you know, decide what's going to make it through the planning phase. And then at the end of the planning phase, 
you're going to say, okay, this is what I'm ready to go forward with. I'm ready to be the champion for this part of the plan. Here's my plan that I'm working with now. And then you take that plan into the recruitment phase. And the recruitment phase is where you're recruiting the two other parts of the um, project, which are the vision holders, which are the people that are in alignment with your vision and want to help you achieve your vision. And then the stakeholders and the stakeholders are the ones that are actually, you know, working with you to do things, to get things done, to execute your vision, right? So they're the realtor that's working on finding you the studio, or they're the supplier that's supplying the, you know, the bamboo for the construction project, right? So, right. but to find the bamboo person, you may have like vision holders that even though they're not going to be doing the construction or something, that they are with you and they're going to do work for you or help connect you or in some way they're helping to be a part of the solution, even though they're not a party in the construction necessarily of the solution. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Like they're not one of the stakeholders that needs to be in the room figuring out like how we're going to get this done, but they've helped you get there. They've helped you bring those people together and get you to that part of the process. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. So those are, those are the vision holders. And then the stakeholders are the ones. So again, during the vision holder and during the stakeholder recruitment process, you're basically vision holders a lot of times will be referring people to you. This is where we're going to have this whole game of everybody referring everybody to everybody, right? And everybody right. like acting as each other's agents and that sort of thing. So that's basically your vision holders, right? So you're sharing your vision with your vision holders, your friends, your followers, whatever. You're saying, this is my vision and I need this kind of person in order to fulfill it. And the incentive that I can offer is like, if you bring me this person, I can give you a $500 bonus or I can give you 10% of whatever business we do together or whatever the incentive is, right? right. That, you're, that you're just offering to the world. Hey, anybody, if you can bring me one of these, I can give you one of these, let's make an exchange, right? And you right. And you incentivize it enough that people are actually sending you whatever you're looking for, right? And that's, again, the game that we're playing. And those are the, those are the vision holders in your world. Does that make sense? The people that are sending yeah. you people, sending you stakeholders. Yeah. And other vision holders. Okay, great. So what we'll start to do now is um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the actual document for a moment. Let me actually pause while I pull it up. That's so funny that I did all that without recording. Let me share again and start okay. again. <laughs> I'll do it quick. So in the planning phase right now, we've already done the first part in terms of the video short description and detailed this video description. We'll pull it out of this video. Now we're into the formulating a plan part. That's what we're gonna do with the rest of our session. Basically looking at, like we said, what stakeholders or resources do you need to attract? Where do you find them? What do you offer them to get their participation, right? And so you're going to begin to share this plan with different people, starting with friends and family, and then people with specialized expertise that you need to seek out. You're gonna update the plan and you're gonna keep going through this process as much as you need. Update the plan, then share it with people again, then update it again, share it again. Do it as much as you need to in order to go forward into the recruiting phase, like we said. And then with the recruiting phase is where you're going to be sharing the plan with the vision holders. You're going to be managing the vision holders, sharing the plan with prospective stakeholders. So that's like you're basically going to be creating like videos like I'm looking for this for the studio. Let's just use, well, let's use excuse me, your construction project as an example on the land, right? So you can right. say, so you can make a five minute video. Okay, we're, we want to create this structure. We need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. You package it all up and then you provide it to, you know, certain friends or certain contacts for them to look at it, share it, post it in certain groups, whatever it looks like. So what you're doing is you're managing your vision holders, sharing the plan with prospective stakeholders. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then you're, you know, once it's getting in the hands of prospective stakeholders, then you're actually managing the stakeholder enrollment or sales process, you know, where you're basically, again, creating an offer for them. Hey, in exchange for you being part of this project, either we're going to pay you this or we're going to give you this or you're going to have this opportunity or whatever it looks like 
That's your stakeholder enrollment or sales process. Make sense? Right. So basically by the end of the recruiting phase, you're going to have collected, you're gonna have recruited all of the stakeholders that you need in order to execute the plan that you've been sharing with everybody. Does that make sense? Yep. And so then at that point, you're all together. You're like, okay, here we all are. Now what are we gonna do? So really the idea at that point is essentially getting buy-in by everybody that like you're all ready to move into the actual you know, execution of this plan. Like everyone's all in, like we've got our commitments, we've got all of our contracts, we've got all of our everything to execute this plan. It gives you a chance, you know, if for whatever reason, again, you're discovering now that you've collected everybody that it's just not going to work or the finances aren't there or we can't find this one person or whatever, you know, it gives you the opportunity to again say, we're not going to go into the management phase. Like we have to do such and such first to move out of the recruitment phase and to move into the management phase or the execution phase of the project. Does that make sense? Yeah. It gives you again that real kind of like stop check, reality check. Like, is this plan, is, is, are we really ready to do this? Are we going to do this? So when you all say yes, when all the stakeholders say yes, all the agreements are in place, that's when you move into the management phase, which is essentially like project management of the, of the project being executed. Make sense? Right. So, you know, so first part is managing the stakeholders onboarding and activation. So, okay, now we're onboarding everybody into, you know, some communication system, some project management system, whatever it is. Then you're going to manage the project, the execution of the plan with all of the stakeholders. And then lastly, you're going to manage the project expansion because basically, you know, as much as you have success with whatever the plan is, then you're going to want to share that success with the world, especially if the plan could be expanded with more support and more participation. It's like, hey, everybody, look what we did with all of this. Now, if you just pitch in, we can do all of this, right? So that'll be a, that's kind of closing the loop on the whole system, right? You've gone from uh, saying what you want to getting what you want, all the steps in between, and now you're closing the loop by being able to expand what you're saying that you want, you know, through this new circulation you've created. So does that make sense, the whole process in a nutshell? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I think now it's just like doing it. Right? Like doing it, exactly. It is. That's exactly what it is. It's just doing it. And especially since you're being a trailblazer and, and you and I are going to actually do, you know, some more of it right now where we're going to get into the yeah. specifics of the analysis. But I just want to take a moment to acknowledge, like you're saying, that the devil is in the details, right? It's like, okay, it's it's it now it's doing it. Like it's great to talk about it, now it's doing it. Yeah. And you're being a trailblazer in showing people how to do this and showing people what it looks like to bring a grounded reality to fantastical visions that we all have, right? It's great for all of us to have fantastical visions. And if we want it to be a reality, we have to do something that looks something like this, right? And now, yeah. and now, especially having a system that systematizes it where we can learn from everybody else that's doing all of this and we're doing all the same sorts of things together and we're all on the same page, it just makes it so much easier to create the results that we want in the world, right? Right. So I really honor you and appreciate you for being one of the very first pioneers of embracing all of this concept and saying, okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, Jared, let's stop talking about it and let's do it. So now we're going to go ahead and dive right in into the different areas. So we're going to start to develop the strategy for the management phase itself. We're actually going to come back later to talk about the strategy for the planning phase and the strategy for the recruitment phase and all of that. But we're going to vision the management phase, which is the execution phase, right? We're going to vision that you're building the structure. We're going to vision that you're making agreements with different landholders, that you're doing all the different things that you need to do to realize your vision now, right? So you, you get what I'm saying? We're projecting ourselves, yeah. we're projecting ourselves forward into the management phase. And in that, we're asking ourselves, what stakeholders do I need? So you already identified some, but let's just throw some of the top ones out there. So let's narrow in 
on what vision you want to hold right now, you know, for Abundancia, whatever you wanted to describe is going to be, you know, let's say the vision that you're manifesting right in this moment. What does that look like? And who are the stake, the, the first stakeholders that you need to, to start working with? Okay, yeah. So basically for uh, the Abundancia and the Costa Rica project, we basically need a stakeholder uh, of $8 million who can put in the $8 million into the land. Yeah. And, and there is a series of uh, benefits also for, for the stakeholder who, do, who does that, um, that initial investment, right? So yeah. basically they have a, a choice of uh, picking one of the first lots of the land. So like first grabs, yeah. And they also have uh, they also have the capacity to um, be very involved in the creation process of abundancia of having their um, vision integrated into the space creation of abundancia. Yeah. And they're basically getting to support one of the first developments of the new earth and really being a, a, a trailblazer um, with creating one of these type of uh, establishments for the new earth. That's great. I'm typing if you're, I don't know if you're able to see, I'm not seeing you right now, but I'm typing. So that's great. Okay. Um, perfect. So that's great. So there's the $8 million land investor and the benefits in exchange that I got down. So that's great. And then what other stakeholders do you need? Let's stay with Costa Rica for a moment since we started with that. So what else, do you, what other stakeholders do you need to show up to make the Costa Rica vision happen? Um, what other stakeholders do we need? Yeah. Uh, well, basically for the $8 million equity raise, there is basically going to be a 50% return on investment um, within um, 24 months. And basically it's going to be going 36% of that. It's going to be going towards land acquisition and 20% uh, is going to be going towards operations, marketing, and we're creating a virtual world uh, that models the, the whole space and all of the, the different buildings. Um, basically the master plan of the subdivision and all the infrastructure of the models and homes. And then of course also 10% uh, is gonna go towards legal permits. So basically that's how the $8 million is gonna be um, used. Got it. I, I missed yeah. some of it, so I need to go back. I got some of it. So 50% okay. ROI within how many months did you say? 24 months. Within 24 months. And then I got starting with the 20% for operations, but what did you have before operations that you were describing? Oh, 30 per, 36% into land acquisition. 36% for land acquisition. Mm -hmm. 19% into uh, master planning and uh, subdivision. 15% into infrastructure and creating the model homes and 10% into legal permits. 15% into- Infrastructure model. and model homes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, okay, good. I think I got it all now. And then the 20%, I mixed some things. So tell me what the 20% is again. Uh, operation, marketing, marketing and, and um, virtual world. Okay, got the it. Virtual world, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I just added the mask, the mask, something else onto the end. Okay, good. So got all of that. And so just so I know, is this where you're looking for one person for the whole eight million or crowdfunding in some way or like 
uh, or or maybe a handful of different investors or yeah I, yeah we're looking for a handful of different investors okay yeah and okay mm -hmm. okay great okay good and yeah. and so um uh, Okay, so what else are you looking for now in terms of stakeholders that you need? Um, so yeah, basically stakeholders that are interested in making their, their life in Costa Rica, you know, and that they're like seeing themselves living there in the future and living so in a new so it's, so it's potential residents is what you're looking for basically, right? They're like your customers. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure, because the investors are um, are ideally going to be residents. Right, but but are you, but are you also looking for residents who aren't going to be the investors, or is? Oh like, yes, yes. Okay, so yeah. That, okay, got it. So you got the land that or the the acquisition money. Then you have residents. Who are essentially your your clients, right? Yeah. Of, of your yeah. business, essentially, right? So your yeah. bu your business is going to do the construction, and you're looking for the the funding or the the investment to get the, the construction or the development of the community done. And then once the development is done, then some of those investors will be residents, and then there will also be other people that will be residents that will not necessarily be investors, right? Yeah, exactly. Basically, some of the residents that are going to pre-buy, like they're saying, yes, I want to live here, right? Um, and we get to develop the models, the, like the virtual world model and everything, but they get to see what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, and they could choose which one, what type of home they want. Yeah. Um, basically, with their pre-purchase of the of the land of the their plot of land in their home um then that's how we're going to be able to start raising the capital back um also for for raising funds right and for the return yeah. of the investment of the investors yeah that's awesome are you yeah. uh open to pre-buying now do you have people that have already done that or are you presenting that as an opportunity yeah that's going to be that's an opportunity to pre-buy okay. your uh lot Okay, great, mm -hmm. great. And so, um, maybe, okay, great. So is that something like if, if I said, and, and all right, let me actually get some more concepts of this. So the lots, do you have a um, an estimate on what the costs of the lots will be or the costs to live there? Yeah, yeah, but we're basically gonna have 60 tiny homes. Uh, and domes with uh, 0.25 acre lots. And these are going to be ranging from 120K to 150K. So these are, this is basically like those, the smaller spaces, right? And then we have larger residential uh, states and that there's going to be 150 homes uh designed with we're going to have different ranges so from one to six bedroom homes and these are going to have five to three acre lots and these are going to go for 250k to up to five million depending on the design of the home right uh the the size of the lot so basically we have a a sliding scale for either somebody who wants a tiny home and has 120k to invest for a smaller 0.25 acre lot right or somebody who wants a six bedroom house in in a in a three acre lot right or a five acre lot i want to yeah, spend more. That, yeah. that's perfect i um it's great to share all that now i i missed some of the details so i need you to go back so i can fill it in so for the 60 tiny homes, they're 0.25 acre lots. And what is the price range on those, did you say? 120K to 150K. Okay, great. 
And then the larger residential space, 150 homes and one to six bedrooms. And um, what else did you say about five, that? Five to three acre lots. 0.5 to three acre lots um, and 250K to 5 million. Okay, great. Okay, good. So, um, okay, good. Um, so those are the clients that you're looking for in terms of people living there. Um, yeah, and we're also going to have commercial leases. <clears throat> so basically, if somebody wants to have like a grocery store there, like a natural grocery store, I mean, everything's going to be not like ecological, right? So retail, yeah. we're going to have retail stores, we're going to have uh, restaurants. Uh, grocery spaces, so like a, a shop, right? So you have a shop there. Yeah. Um, we are going to have commercial leases too. You're going to have what too? Commercial leases. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. good. So these are your your clients are residents and then also commercial. Yeah. So uh, let me actually change this around a little bit. And we're gonna have rental units too, for Airbnb or for retreats, retreat spaces. All right, let me do this real quick. Okay. Um, okay, good. So, so the rental spaces, you're not seeking those clients yet. The pre-buy for the tiny homes and the residential spaces, your people can pre-buy either, either the tiny homes yeah. or the residential spaces now? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then the commercial leases, are you doing a pre-buy for that or you're not into soliciting those uh, clients yet? That's a good question. I'm going to find out more about that. Okay. Um, I would think that may, I think we're starting out with the homes. You're starting out with the what? With the homes, but I'm going to find out more about that. Uh, that's a good question. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm marking here and we'll have in the document, you know, all these different stakeholders that we're looking for and what we're offering them and that sort of thing. So yeah. we've got the investors, we've got the clients that are broken down into residential and then commercial. And um, is there anything else in terms of like, well, I guess the other stakeholders that I'm envisioning are the um, like actual like construction companies and the, the engineering and all of the companies that you would have to hire or work with, you know, once you have the $8 million in hand, right? So that's a whole right. like realm of, um, I guess we would call that development or what category would you put that under of all of those different businesses or entities you'd have to work with on that side of it? Uh, yeah, the development team. Um, yeah, basically we have a, a good team like ready to operate, you know, once we have all the funding. Uh-huh, okay, good. So, you, so, yeah. so you don't have a lot of need to necessarily recruit into the development team. You guys, I guess you can see yeah. what roles you already have filled and if there are other roles that you need filled so that it's accounted for within the plan. 
Yeah, for example, we have uh, some really wonderful lead architects here, con contractors, engineers, um, and development partners, um, and also uh, regenerative systems designers. Um, I'm going to be also leading some of the permaculture uh, design. So I, I actually would like to work with other permaculturists because this is this is a pretty huge project, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I would I would actually want to build a team for for myself, just for myself as a yeah. as a lead designer, having other um, co-designers to work in my team would be wonderful. Yeah, that's great for yeah. sure. And it's a great opportunity that you're creating to pull together, you know, more of those. So that's an example where I just identify. So I put under permaculture, I don't know if you can see that, could use an expanded team or something like that. And you can start, yeah. you can start to specify, you know, the types of people or skills or expertise or, you know, who is it? Okay, if I know permaculturists, you know, is um, is Deva one of the people I should send to you? You know, or who is? Oh, right, you right. You know, or who are the people in my head that I know are attached to permaculture? You know, are they the people that you're looking for? And again, it's like this is where you package what you're looking for in a in a video in a, in a description, and then I just send it to Deva. I just send it to whoever I know. You know, and then they send it to whoever they know, and you know that sort of thing. But this is yeah. where we're doing the work of packaging it up so that it can easily be sent along, right? Right. So, so let's end up, spend a moment while we're right in the midst of it. Let's spend a moment describing the, um, you know, who you could be looking for to expand your permaculture team. Right. What, what would that look like? Well, who, what would those, who would those people be? Okay, so basically, um, if I take a moment right now to think about who those people would be, like if I think about people in Costa Rica, right, um, that I know that are into permaculture, like I would think about uh, my friend Trey, who does permaculture design uh, in Costa Rica. Um, I would think about Rodo, who's a, a bamboo builder, uh, a very famous, well-known bamboo builder there. Let me, um, let me take down these names if so we don't have yeah. to go back to the video later. Oh, so, okay. so, um, so let's say Costa Rica, Costa Rican team, should I say? Um, yeah. And, and so give me the name, Trey, you said? Yeah, Trey Abernathy. T-R, how do you spell that? T-R-E-Y. -E okay. And then who else did you say? Um, uh, the uh, Rodo. How do you spell that? R O D O. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So good. So there's certain people that are popping in your head, and so if you had to describe it in words, if it's not somebody that you know, but somebody that I should send you, like who's the type of person I should be looking for? What sort of skills and expertise are you looking for? Yeah, um, I would definitely be looking for um, somebody who has skills in a, like a 3D. I, three, I, three. Apologize. I apologize, Angie, but this video okay. actually, if it's going to be shared, it'll be much better if we're actually seeing you. Are you able to go back on video? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. It'll just get more legs as an actual video. Where are we? Perfect. Okay. Um, 3D mapping. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. 3D mapping is somebody, some type of skill you're looking for. Good. What else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 3D mapping. And and just basically. to start from the beginning, let's imagine nobody's seen the whole video up until now. So what you're yeah. looking for is somebody that is a permaculture specialist. Start from the beginning of what you're looking for. Yeah, basically somebody who wants to work within a team um, in a a project of abundancia, uh, which is a regenerative living uh, community and uh, sustainable housing. And basically we would need a team to work with, with me, uh, creating the, all of the mapping of the land, right? So the topography 
um, definitely working with somebody who knows how to have all the uh, topography readings of the land and uh, basically creating a, a key line uh, water harvesting system for I'm the sorry, land. Can you say that again. Uh, basically, yeah, a key line water design. Okay, got it. Key line basically, water. that is working with key line. Yeah, key line. Yeah, that's basically working with all of the contours of the land to capture water and the low points and just like directing it in a flow that makes sense for the shape of the land, right? Uh, so yeah, so topography, uh, key line water design, uh, 3D mapping. Yeah, that's basically it. And somebody uh, that is perhaps a wild uh, tropical plant collector, which I know I have a friend that does that um, so that we can get as much biodiversity as possible, tropical biodiversity. Okay, perfect. I think that's great. So that's a good start yeah. for that. And of course you can keep adding to it if you want, but I, what I want to do, as you can yeah. see, you know, we've been mapping out here, you know, the different entities you're looking for, the land investors, the clients, the residential, the commercial. Now, you know, we're getting into the development team and we're looking at areas that you could build it out even more. And like you said, permaculture and specifically for the Costa Rican aspect, you just described, you know, some of the things that you're looking for. So now what, what about, well, we've been staying in Costa Rica this whole time. Should we stay yeah. in Costa Rica or should we start talking about South Florida or do you want to focus a little bit more on the deeper details of Costa Rica or zoom back out to South Florida? Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I like to zoom back into South Florida since we're doing this bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah. so we'll leave this as a starting point for you for the structure, you know, written wise that you can keep filling out more with more right. details. And now let's move, okay. we'll move into South Florida and start talking about the different stakeholders that you could use in South Florida for the types of things that you want to do in South Florida. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, cool. So what it so start like one of the things you mentioned right okay. off the, obviously is the land the strategic partner with the land right yes exactly strategic partner um with the land that would like to either donate a parcel of land i actually do have a non-for-profit uh structure registered so i could take donations uh for resources or for land yeah um or a partnership Right, a partnership where we sign an agreement saying that we're working in a, in a collaboration, right? Uh, basically, the vision is to build a, a center there that can serve as a headquarters for the new earth. We're building the new earth where we can have a temple space, which is for meditation and movement and breathing and workshops and um, a therapy sessions, uh, body work therapy, and different type of holistic and wellness sessions, um, and also a space for ecological education where we can have gardens and where we can have water features for water harvesting and for showcasing how we can utilize water from the buildings and directing them onto the land into the gardens so that there is no waste. Um, where we can model a system of, of no waste uh, or minimizing waste and basically a, a place where we can serve as a role model for how we can build in a tropical environment uh, such as Florida where we can have a passive uh, solar design where we can have a very um, tropical vernacular type of style of design where we can benefit from the airflows um, of the spaces and using biophil biophilic uh, construction patterns, utilizing the patterns from nature 
so that we can also have a co-working space. Um, and in this co-working space where we can co-create uh, different types of uh, media production uh, for uh, different conscious uh, online courses uh, and music too, create creative arts um, where we can have an, an art studio where basically we can have spaces where we can have a, a creator type of uh, lifestyle having like a, a, a workshop space for making things also making jewelry making um wood shop spaces right basically a, a, a space that can have to have compartments for these different activities great mm -hmm. okay good so that's um okay good so we're we're honing in on these different aspects of the vision so i'm gonna just kind of recap some of what i got down here the partnership or strategic partnership let me just do some editing you know so. partnership or strategic partnership that has land that wants to donate a parcel of land um, and you have a nonprofit um, yeah. to accept that and the center can serve as a headquarters for the new earth with a temple space and ecological space being a role model for how we build in a tropical environment tropical design also have a co-working space to co create media production different online courses, music, different arts, art studio, creator lifestyle, workshop space, making things like jewelry and wood shop and space to have different activities. So did yeah. I like, yeah. anything else you want to add? Um, well, definitely like if I think about the, I, I'm thinking about the sacred temple complex um, yeah. that, that I want to create. Yeah. Basically it's uh, on, it's, it's the sacred temple complex. It's a combination of having um, basically a couples education center for uh, relationship, uh, conscious relationships. Uh, I am a relationship and a, a Tantra art coach, healing coach. So I would like to have a temple where we can have uh, tantra workshops, relationship relating, conscious sensuality and sexuality uh, space. Um, and also having a designated area, of, uh, which I call it the Temple of the Crystal Rose for the uniting with the women circles and then having a space for the men, the uh, protectors space, the Temple of the Protector. So we would have the the space for the men, the space for the women, and the space for the men and the women coming together. And within that sacred temple complex that I visualize, I also see a birthing center that is designed for the new children that are coming into the world and where the mothers can have the installations necessary for giving birth in a way that is the most helpful for them and for the children. Um, so having a, a birthing center within this, um, the sacred temple complex. And, and then having also like a space for uh, the children that are growing up, having like a conscious type of uh, education space where the children can learn real life skills from you know the adults that are engaged in the in the in the, in the new earth headquarters um learning how to garden learning how to build learning how to uh make things right uh learning through doing doing things um having a very practical approach for the the children that can have um access to this education yeah so great. making it family friendly um educational spaces mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that's great uh, mm -hmm. 
typing the notes here. Good, that's a lot of different pieces to it. So that's really great. So, um, and again, I think maybe, maybe a, well, you can add more details. I didn't get to type everything yeah. that you said, but I got I down in the sacred temple space, the combination of, um, so let me know what the two things, like yeah. the combination of, it's a combination of what are the two things or the several things. So, uh, the sacred temple complex is basically what I visualize it is being a space that has compartments and that's why we would utilize a uh, biophilic design where within one building you could have the different compartments that like if you think about a flower right like if you think about uh, what the design of a flower is one structure, but that one structure is made out of different components. It has a center, each petal is like a, a root, right? So it's like we can have the center being like the central space of where people come together, um, maybe like a, like a lobby, right? Or where like people come and learn about the different um, all the other different components of the of the temple complex and how to be directed to where they need to go, right? right. Um, and then each petal would be like a different world, you know, and you go to one world and you have all the feminine arts and you go to the other world and you have the masculine arts and then you go to another world, you have like the children's learning play shop and you go to the other world and you have like the, the movement arts, right? And you go to the other room and you have like the, um, the, the medicine room and you have all sorts of potions, right? And things being created. So it's like every room that you walk into or every assignated space, it's like you're going into a different world. Got it, okay, got it. So they're each like different rooms within the temple that are housing. Yeah housing these different things. Each describe. different activity, one of them's for healing, right? So there's all these different things. Awesome, and okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And I think that this is a really good starting foundation for you to start sharing this plan with the analysts, like we talked about, right? So yeah. you, can, you can start sharing this, you know, with Kelly and other people who are already involved, like where else can we add more details in? Because I'm going to start to recruit, you know, these different other pieces that we're looking for. And, um, you know, we've, we've been focusing on the plan. We didn't get into, um, you know, the other aspects of it, but you'll be able to at your own pace you know, looking at it through the lens of strategy, organizing, management, technology, outreach, and finances, where again, the rest of the workshop lets you kind of go through, you know, step-by-step -step answering the questions, kind of figuring out, you know, what technologies are needed, you know, what do I need a CRM system? What kind of video production do I need to do? You know, what do I need to do with social media? So again, just continuing to, to narrow down to all the specific things we need, you know, if we're, you know, for this space that we're creating, this is what we need to do on, you know, social media, or this is what we need to do, you know, to create videos or whatever it looks like. So does that make sense? Yeah. So I think that this is a really good starting foundation. Obviously, it's going to take more time, but you're now in the planning phase. You're now, you know, putting together your initial plan to be able to start sharing with the people that are going to be the analysts in your life again starting with your friends and your families and the in the people you've been working on these projects with it's like what how can we develop this even more how can we describe this even more specifically where are there specific people that we're missing right now where are the specific needs that we haven't met yet that we need to have met in order to make this plan work right so you can really start to look at your vision with a fine tooth comb to really identify what's missing right now and then you know turning that into like a description of what you're looking for both in video format and written format and then you know we'll start to have the infrastructure in place for people to be able to send you that person or that those experts or whatever it is and you know, then potentially earn a commission or whatever incentive or whatever it's going to be so that you can have the whole world working on your behalf, right? 
Yeah. Sound that good? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. And so I think this is really great. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, I'll send you the video. What I'll do is I'll post this full video on YouTube. And actually, now that I think about it, I should send you the raw video um, as well, like via Dropbox or whatever. So you can have it to do whatever edits you want with it. And I'll start to edit certain parts out so we can start to populate your profile page with some of the, you know, visions that you're sharing and some of the stuff we can pull out of this to just get the ball rolling. And, you know, it obviously it'll evolve a lot over the coming weeks, but now, like you said before, it's one thing to talk about it, then it's another thing to do it. Well, now we're actually doing it, right? Right. <laughs> awesome, awesome, yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. I'm very excited, Angie, about all that we covered today. I feel like we got into a lot of specifics enough not only for you to start to be able to you know share this and really get more detailed plan with the people around you but also i think this really is going to help other people to understand how to use the process to be able to start you know constructing their vision so i'm really excited about that it's really great and i appreciate and honor you again for being a trailblazer in this area and seeing the vision so much that you're willing to be one of the first to just jump in and do what we can do and just make it work. Yeah, exactly. We just got to trust, believe, and move forward. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else that you want to go over? Um, I, you know, I, I think we've, from I my perspective, we're we're at a good, we're at a good pausing point. Yeah, I think so. I have a cop four, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready for that. Perfect. But I'll definitely uh, keep on reviewing the, uh, the worksheet and keep on brainstorming. And I'll let you know if I get stuck anywhere. And then perfect. Okay. That sounds perfect. Okay, great. Great being great. with you, Angie. All yeah. right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.